Would you look at that? We are back into the wide world of IEMs. I've been getting a lot of invitations to do IEM reviews, and it is a little bit interesting. Clearly, there are plentiful options in the market. Let me introduce you to yet one more. The Meteor is $110. What can this product do for the audiophile community? The Meteor is a fairly low impedance IEM. It's 12 ohms with a sensitivity of 105 decibels. That's an important factor to consider, especially if you're using IEMs plugged directly into your mobile device. The Meteor has a dual driver design using one 10mm beryllium plated diaphragm. For some strange reason, TRI says they use medical grade resin for the housing. I don't think it really makes a difference, but it was an odd statement, and one I've seen repeated by other manufacturers. TRI does claim that each pair of Meteors is handcrafted, resulting in each pair having a unique texture. As for sound performance, well, there's not much to go on. TRI simply says that the Meteor will reproduce high quality sound and inherit the classic taste. You get bonus points if you can make sense of that. Ultimately, the TRI Meteor must have one of the most simple, underemphasized, and non-descriptive marketing I have ever seen of any IEM. And that is impressive. I guess we will need to figure out the sound signature for ourselves. The Meteor is constructed like a lot of typical universal fit IEMs. It's got a cone or wedge shape. The medical grade resin is just plastic, the same type used in many other similar products, or at least it feels and looks that way. The Meteor is smooth to the touch. The speckle design is obvious indirect light, but fairly muted otherwise. The Meteor comes with an abundance of accessories. You get 8 pairs of ear tips of varying sizes, a cleaning cloth, a cleaning brush, a sturdy case, and of course, a 2-pin cable. The cable is well made. It is quite pliable, supple, and transmits little microphonics. As for comfort, I found the Meteor to be very comfortable indeed. This IEM sits securely within my ear cavity. Passive noise isolation is as good with the Meteor as on any other similar product. Some ambient noise is reduced, but nothing is actually eliminated. I can easily wear the Meteor for about 3 hours before needing a break. Overall, the Meteor is a well-made, well-accessorized, and comfortable IEM. I want to highlight that this $100 IEM has more accessories than the $700 Death On Ray Tender. And I'll keep repeating this in every future IEM review because Death On Ray should be ashamed of their absurd packaging. To test the Meteor, I used it with various devices. This includes my RME ADI2 DAC, Low 2 Paw S1, Eco Zerta ITM03, and the Ibasso DX80. I used the stock accessories. I listened to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD and Kobuz. As I said earlier, the Meteor is a sensitive IEM. You won't have trouble driving it. Plug it directly into your mobile device and you'll get plenty of power. If you choose to use an amplifier, a moderate one will be plenty. The Zerta, for example, easily drove this IEM. My tests indicate that the Meteor has a neutral sub-bass and an emphasized mid-bass. In Mountains by Hans Zimmer, there's a rumble at the beginning. This is supposed to rise slowly into a crescendo. The Meteor did present this detail, and it sounded similar to what I heard on the neutral Moondrop Quarks. When the crescendo hit, the organ was about one step ahead of the other instruments. The rolling thunder effect was audible, but did not overpower the other elements. When the vocals chimed in, they rose from the background until they were about shoulder to shoulder with the instruments. In Conquer by Overwork, there's a rolling marble sound at the beginning. This is supposed to pan from right to left to center. The Meteor did present the sound of rolling marbles, but none of the panning. There are multiple drums in this track, and the Meteor rendered all of them clearly. Each drum strike seemed to meld slightly with each subsequent one. Drum impacts were hard, and a little harder than what I heard on the quarks. I listened to several hip-hop songs, including Pure Water, New Patek, Reel It In, and Uproar. On each occasion, the Meteor clearly rendered the sub-bass. Subwoofers sounded like they were at the other end of a medium-sized room. In contrast, similar to what I heard to the quarks. The drums were slightly louder on the Meteor. The vocals were one step ahead of the instruments and retained their sparkle. If you want to know what I mean by sparkle, please watch the video titled How to Get Crystal Clear High-End Vocals by Help Me Devon. I listened to my Sicario playlist. I use these songs to determine if there is any audible bass distortion. Traversing from low to high volumes, the Meteor never distorted. Overall, the Meteor seems to have a neutral-ish sub-bass and a slightly elevated mid-bass. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass and bass clarity is about average. 
My tests indicate that the meteor has slightly forward mids with marginally sibilant vocals. In Olar Gartland's song Why Am I Like This, there's natural vocal grain and sibilance mixed in. The meteor kept the grain neutral and it sounded similar to the quarks. However, the meteor did elevate the sibilance by a few decibels. The quarks were a bit closer to neutral in this regard. Orla's voice was one step ahead of the instruments. The drums never drowned her out, but the drums were a little louder than the other instruments. There was some melding between the drums and the guitar. In Want You Back by Haim, the meteor again slightly accentuated female sibilance. The quarks were a few decibels closer to neutral, I think. At 8 seconds, the primary singer says the word we and drags it out, making it sound gravelly. The meteor rendered this detail clearly. There are two backup vocalists, one in either channel. The meteor clearly presented their voices. When the instruments played at maximum, all three voices remained reasonably clear, and I could still hear their individual tonalities. There was some melding among the piano, drums, bass, and guitar. Again, the drums were a little bit louder than the other instruments. In Superposition by Young the Giant, the meteor presented the ukulele, drums, and bass. The drums were a little louder than the ukulele, but all three instruments were easily audible. The meteor did not emphasize the sibilance of the male vocalist. This was similar to what I heard on the quarks. There's a backup vocalist whose voice is layered beneath the primaries. Most IEMs and headphones cannot reveal this detail. The meteor could not either. Between 1 minute and 10 and 1 minute and 20 seconds, there are sharp intakes of breaths. The meteor clearly rendered this detail. Overall, the mids seem to be marginally forward. There is some bass bleed into the mids. However, vocals are generally clear and stand one step ahead of instruments. Female vocalists receive a slight emphasis in sibilance. My tests indicate that the meteor has very marginally emphasized upper treble. In Skirtso for X-Wings, the meteor clearly presented the brass and horns. Their nasally signatures came through the other instruments. The higher pitched notes from the brass and horns seemed slightly emphasized when compared to the more neutral quarks. The difference here was minor. I could hear the various group sets. The tampani was obvious, but did not overshadow the other elements. The meteor seems to have width, but no depth or verticality. In other words, I could hear instruments further out into the wings, but not arranged deeper into the well and no sounds came from above or below. In Flight from the City, the meteor made the piano sound like it was about 6 feet away. Its bassy notes seemed clear and matched what I heard on the quarks. I could hear the pops and sizzles and electric buzzing effects. The cello melded marginally with the piano's notes, but both instruments were easily audible. I heard the creaking of wood on the pianist's bench and the shifting of the cello's weight. In Take 5 by the Dave Brubeck Quartet, the meteor rendered the piano in the right, drums in the left, saxophone center, and the bass one step behind. The saxophone's higher pitched notes seemed slightly louder than what I heard on the quarks. The cymbals are struck at different parts, which should result in slightly varied tonalities. The meteor made every cymbal strike sound the same. The saxophone was one step ahead of the other instruments. Overall, the meteor appears to have a close to neutral treble until the upper treble region. At that point, there's a slight upward departure. I would guess that the emphasis is maybe a few decibels. The meteor never sounded harsh, even at high volumes. TRI says nothing about the detailed retrieval ability of the meteor. My time with this IM suggests that it has average to maybe slightly above average detail retrieval. Obvious details are clear, but subtle and nuanced details might be hard to hear. This is not a detail monster. Twangs of guitar strings, sharp intakes of breaths, multiple vocalists, pops and sizzles, electric buzzing, creaking of wood, shifting of a cello's weight, gravelly natures of vocals, all of these are obvious details and are audible. I have a quantitative test for detail retrieval. I use Kazuki's song New Light, which has layers of details. This includes the sound of wind, rustling of grass, children playing, synth, piano, and footsteps. I count the number of footsteps I can hear in the first 60 seconds. The Heidi's MS2 presents 8 to 9 footsteps. The Tenhaifi T2 and T2 Evo present 7 to 8. The Moondrop Aria presents 7. The T2 Plus, Blonde BL 05S, and the The Audio Legacy 2 present 6 to 7. The Moondrop Starfield presents 6. The Moondrop Quarks, Blonde BL03, and the Triple Wind Melee each present 5 to 6. The TRI Meteor presents 7 footsteps. For my detailed resolution scale, I use the Moondrop Aria and Starfield as the average performers. Any IEM that provides more or less footsteps is judged accordingly. Thus, on my scale, the BL03 would be considered below average and the T2 would be above average. Using this standard, it seems clear to me that the Meteor has an average amount of detail. 
You can eke out a little bit more if you use different ear tips, I think. Once again, TRI does not say anything about the soundstage performance of this IEM. In my experience, the meter seems to have average soundstage. It presents width, but no verticality or depth. Just as with the detailed resolution test, I also have a scale for soundstage. For me, this involves, yet again, using the Moondrop Aria and Starfield as the average performers. Anything that has greater or lesser soundstage is judged accordingly. The Tin Hi-Fi T2 has above average soundstage. The Heidi's MS2 is similar to the T2 in this regard. The Blonde BL03 and the BL05S are average at best, and perhaps slightly below average in soundstage based on proper fit. The Starfield, Aria, and Quarks are average. I would place the Meteor on the same stage as the Aria and Quarks. Changing ear tips might affect your perception of soundstage. It is a little frustrating when companies won't tell us what their IEMs or headphones sound like. It is rare to see frequency response graphs. It is typical to read gibberish that relays no meaningful idea of what we should expect. TRI sidestepped the usual stuff and told us almost nothing. If you buy this IEM, you're doing so without any particular promises from this company. The Meteor appears to have fairly neutral sub-bass but a slight emphasis in mid-bass. There's average separation and clarity in the bass region. There's some bass bleed into the mids. The mids are slightly forward. Female vocals receive a slight emphasis in sibilance by about a few decibels, I think. There's average to maybe above average clarity in the mids region. Drums are typically a little louder than other elements in a mix. The treble seems to be close to neutral until the upper treble region. At that point, the meteor has a slight upward deviation. This isn't harsh or piercing, and I would guess that the emphasis is no more than a few decibels. The Meteor presents average soundstage and detail retrieval. This is not a bassy IM. It is not a V-shaped signature. It is not an aggressive W-shape either. It is instead a slight modification to what I would consider eh, maybe neutral. The marginal emphasis in mid-bass, mids, and upper treble keep this IM out of the neutral category, to be perfectly honest. In my view, I find the Meteor to be a balanced sounding IEM. No particular element outshines any other. You don't hear piercing treble, harsh vocals, or boomy bass. The Meteor may not suit you if you're looking for a neutral tuning. If you cannot stand any amount of sibilance, then the Meteor might be a deal breaker. If you want a bassy IEM, then the Meteor is not likely to be the right contender for you. Remember, that the types of ear tips you use and the placement of the IEMs will affect how you experience the sound signature. It's important we compare products as often as possible. That's the only way to know what the newest gear is actually capable of. Here, we will test the Meteor against the Moondrop Aria and the Triple Win Melee. I use the stock accessories for these comparisons. I plugged each IEM into a passive AB switch. That switch was connected to my RME ADI2 DAC. I try to volume match. I listen to my test playlist on Amazon Music HD and Cobus. The Aria and Meteor have both bass emphasis. However, the Aria seems to be just a little bit more. The Aria has an elevation in sub bass compared to the Meteor, which seems to be closer to neutral tuning. Both products sound like they have similar mid bass. Mid bass impact is, again, similar. Separation of sub bass from mid bass is a little bit clearer on the Meteor. The Aria has more bass bleed into the mids. The Meteor has slightly forward mids and its vocals are marginally sibilant. The Aria has recessed mids and drums usually sound louder. The Aria sibilance was a little bit more obvious than what I heard on the Meteor. There was a little more clarity in the mids region on the Meteor. Separation of mid-centric elements was easier to hear on the Meteor. The treble is different. The Aria seems to have a mid-treble emphasis, while the Meteor has fairly neutral treble with a marginal emphasis in the upper treble. Treble clarity and separation of instruments in this region is more obvious on the Meteor. The Meteor has about as much detail retrieval as the Aria and only slightly wider soundstage. The Melee appears to have similar sub-bass rendition compared to the Meteor. However, I think the Melee has slightly greater mid-bass emphasis, though not by much. Separation of sub-bass from mid-bass is similar, but the Meteor appeared to be marginally clearer. Mid-bass impact was nearly identical. The melee has greater bass bleed into the mids. The treble is a little different. Both IEMs seem to have neutral or close to neutral rendition in the lower and mid treble region. 
However, the melee has a slightly upper treble roll-off compared to the meteor's slight accentuation of the upper treble. Clarity and separation of treble instruments is a little bit more obvious on the meteor. The meteor has more detailed retrieval and slightly wider soundstage than the melee. These types of comparisons help us understand how different new gear actually is. Sometimes it's a big change from what you may already have, and other times it's a slight deviation which you could try to replicate through EQ. Here, the Meteor clearly sounds different from the Aria and Melee. Whether any of these IEMs will be to your liking is something only you can answer. I often wonder what these IEM companies are doing. Month after month, they release another IEM. The market is saturated and frankly oversaturated with IEMs. On the one hand, you get lots of options throughout the wide spectrum of price brackets. On the other hand, you could easily throw good money after bad while finding the right IEM for you. Here, TRI adds another pickle in the ever-growing jar of IEM pickles. The Meteor is a balanced sounding IEM. It's got a fairly neutral sub bass but an elevated mid bass. The mids are slightly forward, with vocals clear among the mid centric elements. The treble has a slight emphasis in the upper treble region. The Meteor has average detail retrieval and approximately average soundstage. It sounds different from the Aria and Melee, and from many other IEMs that I am familiar with. Whether those differences are significant enough to plop down $110 is another matter. This brings us to value. I think the Meteor is arguably value. You get a well-made product with good accessories and a comfortable fit. While you may hate the sound signature, it's a stretch to say that the Meteor is a badly constructed or presented IEM. So, if you're in the market for an IEM, then the Meteor is as good an option as many others. You can find reasons to opt for something else, just as you could find clear reasons to prefer the Meteor.